Hey teacher friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I'm Marcy and I love helping first, second, and third grade teachers simplify their math instruction with practical strategies and time-saving tools. Today, I'm sharing one of my favorite strategies for helping students tackle word problems with confidence. And it's simple. It's called start, change, result. And it's a total game changer in the classroom. So if you're ready, let's dive in and get started. What is the start change result strategy? Well, it's a simple visual way to help students break down word problems and figure out what information they have and what they still need to find out. The idea is to identify three parts of a story problem. The first part is the start, how many you had to begin with. Then we have the change. The change is what happened to that amount. Did you add something or did you subtract something? And the final part of the word problem is the result, which is the ending amount. This strategy helps students focus on what the problem is actually asking, which is something our kids often struggle with. Even though there are 11 different types of word problems that students are exposed to in second grade, and psst, I've got a video all about that if you wanna dive in deeper, I'll link it in the description. But the start change result strategy works really well for two of those types of problems, and those are join and separate problems, whether the unknown is the result, the change, or the start. Now, it's important to note, this strategy won't work for every type of word problem. For example, it doesn't work with part, part, whole or compare type problems. That's because those types don't involve a direct action or a change. There's no increase or decrease happening. Instead, students are identifying relationships between amounts or combining two parts to make a whole. Those situations call for completely different strategies. Start change result is best used when something is actively being added or taken away, which is why it's my go-to strategy for join and separate problem types. So why is this strategy beneficial? Well, I like it especially because it builds strong number sense and encourages flexible thinking. It pushes students to really think about what's happening in the problem rather than just grabbing numbers and guessing which operation to use. It also supports vocabulary development where students are learning to identify whether something is being added or taken away or what the numbers in the problem actually represents. Plus, it gives them confidence. They don't feel as overwhelmed when they have a structure to follow. And let's be honest, word problems are one of the trickiest parts of math for our students, even for some of our teachers, right? So today I wanna to talk about how this strategy is going to work. And I'm gonna use and model the start change results strategy using my daily word problem practice. We're going to start with reading the word problem out loud together. Then in our journal, we are going to write start change result. We don't know if we're adding or subtracting yet, so I'm just gonna start out with those three words. I'm going to show you three different examples. The first one is going to be a basic problem. Then we're gonna get into one with a little bit more challenging numbers. And then the final example I'm gonna show you is going to be using a numberless word problem. So first, we would read our problem out loud together. Then underneath, we are gonna write start change result. Meg has eight seashells in her bucket. Her dad gave her six more. How many seashells does Meg have now? We're gonna start out and we're gonna write start change result. And then underneath start change result, I'm going to draw three blanks. We don't know if we're adding or subtracting yet. So this is really great because it's helping us set up the problem for what operation we need to do. We're going to go back and we're going to talk about what is happening in the problem. So I'm going to say, do we know how many seashells Meg starts with in her bucket? Do we know how many she has at the beginning? Yes, we know that she has eight seashells. That is our starting number. Then we know that her dad gave her six more. I'm gonna ask them, 
Is there a change happening to the amount of seashells in her bucket? Yes, there is. Her dad is giving her six more. Because dad is giving her six more, this is making this an addition problem. So I'm gonna write six for my change amount and then we're gonna add our plus sign and our equal sign. Now we know what operation needs to happen and what we need to do in order to solve. If your kids needed to use a number line, if they needed to draw pictures, maybe they need to use manipulatives to help them solve, they absolutely can. So let's say in this example, we're working um, with first grade students or beginning of the year second grade students, they might not know eight plus six automatically in their head. So maybe they want to draw out a picture to match. You're wanting them to show their work. We know that she starts out with eight. Her dad gives her six more. Eight plus six is 14. So our result is 14. Meg ends up with 14 seashells in her bucket. Let's move on to a more challenging problem. Emily has 288 shiny flower pencils. She gave some to her friends. Now Emily has 267 pencils left. How many pencils did Emily give to her friends? You could have them write start change result. If they've been doing this for a while, sometimes I will just let them write S for start, C for change, and R for result. Then underneath, we are gonna draw our three blanks because we do not know if this is addition or subtraction yet. I wanna talk out what's happening in the problem in order for them to figure out what operation is being used. So I'm gonna say, do we know how many pencils Emily starts with? Yes, we do. We know that she starts out with 288 shiny flower pencils. That is our starting number. We know that she gave some away to her friends. Do we know how many she gave away? We do not, but we know that her starting amount changes. So this is the number we're probably gonna have to solve for. And that the ending result is that she has 267 pencils left. Then we're gonna talk through the process of, if she gave some away to her friends, is she adding more to her pencils or is she taking some away? Some are going away, so we know that we need to set this up as a subtraction problem. Now, this also gives us a missing number. So in order to find our missing number, then we would move into the conversation of how are we gonna find that missing number? To find it, we're gonna do 288 minus 267. And that is going to give us our changed amount. Eight minus seven is one, eight minus six is two. Our change is 21. Emily gave 21 pencils to her friends. Now in the final example that I'm going to show you, we are going to use a numberless word problem. What I love about numberless word problems is that they allow your students to focus on what is actually occurring in the problem without being what I like to call a number plucker. This means that they're not going to look at two numbers in a problem and they're not just gonna either pick addition or subtraction based on what they think they might know. I like to use numberless word problems to really help their thinking. This is also great for differentiation. You could easily use single digit numbers, two digit numbers, three digit numbers, a mix of more than one, whatever you would like to do within the problem. In this example, some kids are playing at the park. Blank of them went home. Blank kids are still playing. How many kids were at the park to start? To set this up, we are gonna write out, start, change, result. Or SCR, whichever you prefer. We're gonna draw our three blanks underneath. Then, even though we don't know the numbers, we can still talk through the actions that are taking place. I'm gonna say, some kids were playing at the park. Do we know how many kids are playing at the park to start with? No, we don't. That is our question. We know that some of them went home. If they went home, are we going to add or subtract? 
We know we're going to subtract, so we're going to set this up as a subtraction problem. Once we have this in place, now I can add in whichever numbers I like. So let's say that six kids went home, there are 13 kids still playing. And this is where differentiation comes in. If you had kids working on different levels, you could set the problem up whole group and then you could walk around and you could assign different kids different numbers in order to challenge their thinking. So we know that some went away. That was six. Six is our change. We know that 13 are left at the park. To find out our starting number, what do we need to do with these two numbers in order to find our answer? Well, we know to find the starting numbers, we need to add 13 and 6. You can go through the process of figuring that out. We know that 13 plus 6 is 19, which gives us our starting number. There were 19 kids playing at the park to start with. So our answer is going to be 19 kids. One of the easiest ways to incorporate this strategy is by doing daily practice. And what I do is incorporate a daily word problem every single day. This is part of our math warm up. It's really simple. I use my daily problem solving prompts are a set of prompts for each month of the year. Each month includes 30 days of different word problem types that also include a numberless version so that you can easily differentiate or use the numbers of your choosing. At the top of each page, it tells you the type of word problem that is being used. I also have other practice sprinkled in here such as adding multiple two-digit numbers, we've got regrouping, and I also throw in some spiral review for other subjects such as place value, fractions, time, money, and all of those things. Each day students glue a word problem strip into their math journal and as you can see they can easily fit three to four problems on one page. Since it's one, one problem a day it's quick and simple but it's really super effective and it helps me spiral review, build stamina, and it allows students to have daily exposure to those different word problem types. If you want to try out this resource in your classroom, I'm going to leave links in the description below to everything that I shared today. You can also find these word problem prompts along with all of my math resources for first, second, and third grade inside of the Inner Circle Math Membership. The Inner Circle gives you instant access to everything and I mean everything that I've ever created for first, second, and third grade math. And it costs less than a venti coffee and a muffin at Starbucks each month. There's no more scrambling to find quality math materials. If today's video was helpful, be sure to hit that like button for me and give this channel a subscribe. That way you don't miss out on future videos. And comment and let me know how you are teaching word problems this year. I would love to hear what strategies you are using. And plus, I love hearing from you as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.